sisters and brothers in faith, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it's been a quiet week in Red Rock City, my hometown, out there on the edge of the Iron Range. It's getting cold, really cold. Red Rock folks have gotten kind of spoiled the, these past few mild winters. This Christmas is going to help us all remember what winter is really like. The snowbirds, they're all packed and anxious and ready to get the holidays over with so they can get out of town. <laughs> Somewhere warm, somewhere where you can go outside and breathe without your nose hairs freezing. <laughs> and it's Christmas, Christmas week. Pastor Isaacson and his wife, ever the traditionalists, finally put up their tree just this week after the third Advent service. He tried to get out of it, actually, by pretending to be asleep. But Mrs. Isaacson did not buy it. <laughs> she accidentally spilt her Diet Coke on him and then she said, oh, as long as you're awake, could you carry some of the Christmas de decorations up? <laughs> Something that she didn't hear. But he did bring all the decorations up. And they set up the tree, and then he began stringing the lights. And Mrs. Isaacson, of course, gave advice on where to string them, you know, to make sure they're all just right. And then all of a sudden she said, oh, look, the sunset. Isn't it beautiful? Pronounced that way, beautiful, like it has a T in the middle, huh? Well, Pastor Isaacson, he just kind of pretended not to hear. Not because he was mean, although he was that, <laughs> but because she said that every single day at sunset and at sunrise, and he remembered the old place overlooking the closed steel mill on the ruins of the train station behind the polluted river where they used to live. And about this time of year, the sun set right behind the ruins. Didn't matter. Every day it was the same thing. Oh, look at the sunset. Isn't it beautiful? As if there were some kind of transcendent hallmark moment. As if, as if there were something more than meets the eye here. The sun set, they began to hang the ornaments. And they all had to be just right, you know how that is, a little section of the tree for each of their four children and two grandchildren. The ornaments that they'd made or been given over the years, some of them showed their age a little bit, but each one represented an important moment. Pastor Isaacson tried to hold back his tears as he hung them. His wife didn't even try. Well, on Christmas Eve, the church was packed with families, kids he hadn't seen since confirmation. It was so good to see them, not just in church, but because those squirrely middle schoolers had grown into fine young men and women, talented, smart. He wished he could see them more, just to hear their thoughts and their dreams about the future. When the congregation sang, O Little Town of Bethlehem, Pastor Isaacson looked over, out over the crowd, and there was the girl he confirmed. And now her child was in confirmation, and she was acting just like her mother. <laughs> he saw the child in the army. He looked so good in his uniform. And then there was the missing child. He always sat in back, second to last pew on the right, they buried him last month. His wife was there, eyes red, family around her. All these families, not so different than that one in Bethlehem, full of hopes, dreams, fears, dangers. How do you tell them about Emmanuel, God with them, wherever they are, whatever they do. The hymn ended and he looked out over the congregation. What do you say? He cleared his throat and he began his sermon. <clears throat> well, David Josephson, he wasn't really listening. No disrespect to pastor, he just couldn't. There was too much going on in his life. What with the kids' activities and all. And he was so proud of them, sitting, in there, sitting there in church beside them. He thought back on all the years when that had never happened. Not because they didn't want to be here, but because he didn't want to be here. 
He didn't have time for church. He didn't have time for a lot of things back then. Since the business failed, he's had nothing but time. And it hasn't been pretty. Losing your shirt makes a guy take stock of his life. Those months were terrible. His whole life's work down the toilet, 20 years, and he had nothing to show for it, nothing. After the anger went away, the dark days of despair set in. And then, but then one day he noticed his wife. <laughs> she was still there, still loved him even. Not that he deserved it. And he noticed, he noticed his kids. They were good kids. How did they get so old and so mature? And they still seemed to care for him too, even after the terrible father that he'd been. It's not like he didn't beat them or anything. His were more sins of omission rather than commission. He missed so many important moments in their lives. He went through the family photos one day and noticed all the times that he was not there. It kind of made him thankful in a strange way that the business had failed. He could have gone to his grave and never noticed all that he was missing. These last six months, he's been at every one of his son's hockey games and his daughter's volleyball games. He even joined his wife's bowling league. <laughs> and fi- frankly, the rest of the tires getting, the rest of the family is getting kind of tired of him being around all the time. But David doesn't care. Life, this Christmas, is new and fresh and full in a way he'd almost forgotten it could be. He'd never admit it, but he even loved church. <laughs> it helped him see some things he'd been missing, something beyond what's there, you know what I mean? You'd think a guy whose business went belly up would be kind of sad, but David had never been happier. I mean, isn't that strange? Steve and Cindy Wilson are sitting next to the Josephsons and their kids, Lori, just home from college, and Peter, still in high school. Their oldest son, Christopher, he he isn't sitting with them this year. He's over in Afghanistan. His mother has trouble listening in church because her thoughts always wander to the other side of the world, to him. He's such a good boy, so talented. What's he doing over there? She thought about it and realized it's already Christmas morning for Christopher. He's probably going out on patrol again today. He never tells them what they're doing. Part of it, I suppose, is to keep the information out of enemy hands but most of it is to keep them from worrying so much. He's a good soldier and a good son. He joined the service out of a deep sense of duty and to help pay for college so he wouldn't be a burden to his folks. Cindy finds herself praying constantly that God would be with him, that God would protect him and bring him home safe. The couple next to the Wilsons, the Kimballs, Dean and Anne, did you hear about them? Their daughter's pregnant. She told them the news last May. She, she's single, but she's 24 and she's finished her education, so she's not in the same boat like, as the Virgin Mary was in or anything like that. But the guy, he's such a loser. <laughs> they've, known him, they've known each other since they began dating in high school. And he's never held a job, and he's never tried to get an education, and he's always at a party. They were on and off for a couple of years, and she knew he was a loser, but she's still drawn to him like a moth to a flame. He hasn't been around much since last summer. In these last seven months, they've grieved for their daughter. I mean, they have so many mixed feelings. Being grandparents, that's good. But the timing, the money problems, the shame. Truth be told, they had been harder on Andrea than they should have been. Their last conversation, Andrea hung up on her mother and they've not spoken in a month. Whenever they call, all they get now is the voicemail. Pastor Isaacson had just begun the second point of his sermon when Dean's cell phone started ringing. 
He tried quick to reach in his pocket to turn it off, but it slipped out of his hand and fell beneath the chair and kept ringing and ringing. He went down after it, and the lady in front of him slapped him when he brushed, his, brushed against her legs. And he finally got hold of it and pressed the button and whispered really loudly from other, under the pew, Hello! Dad, it's Andrea. It's a girl, and she's so beautiful. And Dean didn't hear the rest. He jumped up in the air and he yelled, All right, I'm a grandpa! <laughs> and then he remembered where he was. And he saw the pastor and every person in the church looking at him. And he put the phone in his pocket and took Anne's hand and ushered her out of church real quiet so as not to disturb anybody. <laughs> They drove to the hospital and ran to their daughter's room, and from the doorway they saw, they saw the loser standing over Andrea, stroking her hair. Their daughter was holding a little bundle. She looked so tired, but radiant somehow. The loser came and gave each of them a chocolate cigar and said, Grandma, Grandpa, meet your new granddaughter, Deanne. We wanted to name her after both of you. Dean didn't know what to do, so he hugged the loser. And Anne knelt beside her daughter and opened the receiving blanket that swaddled this child, this holy child that God had given them. And she looked into her granddaughter's tiny little face, and she saw her daughter's chin and her husband's nose and the loser's eyes, and she wept with joy at this new little Christmas Eve grandchild. Back at church, the sermon was ended and the congregation began to light candles and sing Silent Night. They do it every year, but it still chokes Pastor Isaacson up. All those people singing in the warm, glowing light, the tongues of flame lighting their faces like the Holy Spirit within them. The glow that lights the whole sanctuary and for just a moment, Pastor Isaacson can see God with us. Not God on our side like a politician would say, but God among us in all the everyday things. A God who experienced all the frailties and contradictions of life on this planet, like a sunset over closed factories there's something more here than meets the eye. The mystery of Emmanuel, a God who is with us, a God who is among us. It's beautiful. And that's the news from Red Rock City where the Roman Catholics are strong, the Methodists are good looking, and the Baptists are above average. Please stand for the hand.